Coming up, will the sheep obey their tiny corgi shepherd? Herding and guiding, this dog does double duty. And this leaping lab goes for big air. Border Collies, regarded as one of the best herding breeds, often run far and wide and use the stare to move their flock. But not Ingrid. She's a seven-year-old cardigan corgi. Cardies are an ancient Welsh working breed. Dana Hassemeyer wants more people to know about these dogs and what they can accomplish with their low-slung physique. I am on a mission with cardigans. I want people to see that they're very, very capable herding dogs. They just look different than the other ones. The worst thing you can say to me at a herding trial is, gee, that dog's cute. You know, I just, ugh, hate it, hate it. It's easy to see why people can't resist calling Ingrid cute. She has an endearing ladylike manner. She's Miss Pris, is what she is. On her small hobby farm in Trenton, Ohio, Dana has a flock of sheep to keep her cardies in working shape. Ingrid hesitates. There's water ahead. Let's go. She doesn't like to get her paws dirty. She doesn't like to go through puddles. She doesn't like to go through mud. She's not a, a tough, aggressive herding dog. She's a dainty little lady. Ingrid here. Ingrid here, let's go. Dainty or not, tomorrow Ingrid is competing in an all-breed herding trial. She has to Good. prove Cardies can herd sheep Good. with the best of them. Cardies were bred for small areas, not wide open spaces. The bigger the area, the harder the job for compact Ingrid. The cardigan was developed to work cattle. And the thing about the short legs is that they're below kick height. Cow kick height is approximately 12 to 14 inches. And the cardigan standard says they should be no taller than 12 and a half inches. Ingrid, wait to me. Ingrid, wait to me. Hurry. The height is not an advantage, though, when you work sheep. Sheep don't tend to take them very seriously. Dana uses traditional herding commands. Come by means go left. Ingrid, come by. Ingrid, come by. Come by. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Cardi's challenges with hurry, sheep hurry. aren't just physical. They're always trying to convince the sheep that they're in control. Hurry. hurry. Another thing is they're just not very fast. If the sheep want to run away, the sheep run away. Hurry up, hurry up. So the cardigan has to be very smart to be able to uh, handle sheep who don't want to be handled. Most cardies nip at the livestock to get the job done, but Ingrid uses a gentle approach. Walk them up, walk them up. She's very polite and very friendly around the livestock. She doesn't want to, she doesn't want to offend them. Um, she doesn't bite. Ingrid wants to negotiate. Girl, walk up, walk up. Ingrid wants to ask the livestock to do walk things. Up, she doesn't up. want to make them do things. So she's a little atypical there. But polite Ingrid still has a lot to learn. Ingrid's a work in process. Uh, she's learning to take some guidance from me, yet to be comfortable with making her own decisions. So she's, she's about three quarters of the way there right now. Dana's very favorite cardi, Dot, Ingrid's mother, died recently. Dot was an award-winning herder and a very special companion to Dana. Now Ingrid's trying her best to fill the void. Since Ingrid's mother passed away this fall, I've seen her really uh, step up and she wants to be my partner, she wants to be my number one dog. Um, before she was sort of... Um, she was on the bench waiting for her turn to play. But now, she really seems as though she wants to be the starter. She wants to be the number one dog. Girl, help you, good girl, yeah, good girl, good, good. She'll look at me and, and like, you know, did I do that right, you know, is that good? So she's, she's definitely fighting more for that now. It's time for a Cardi road trip to the trial. This will be Ingrid's first chance to shine in competition without being overshadowed by Dot. Her roommate, Reggie, comes along to learn the ropes. Is there a chance that Ingrid can crash and burn at this trial? Oh, yes, there's a great chance. 
We haven't practiced nearly enough this year. I also feel a lot of pressure on Ingrid and I because we're the only cardigan handler team that most people ever see. As the star cardigan, Ingrid gets to sit up front in first class. I want them to think that, that my dogs are great and by extension that cardigans are great. So yeah, Ingrid and I, I tell you, we're carrying the whole weight of the breed on us tomorrow. At the American Herding Breeds Association Turkey Trot Trial, bad weather has reduced the turnout. Dana wants Ingrid to wow the competition, but the snow adds an extra challenge. It is cold today, and it makes it really hard on the dogs because their feet are in the snow right now. So their feet are cold, their muscles are cold, Plus, the sheep are going to be uh, very fast today. They're going to want to run. So it, it's challenging when it's cold. Challenging for the dog, challenging for the handler. Here, the snow out your feet. Before Ingrid actually goes into the arena, I'll warm her up a little bit. I'll walk her around. But basically, all your prep work is done at home. This is the test. Today is the test. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. She doesn't want to go through the mud. Come on, add a girl. Dana tells Ingrid to go left. Come by. Forget the puddles. Come by. Come on. Come on. I find with the herding livestock that do not know my dogs, I'll have a little window, a five second window where the, the sheep will see the dog from a distance and he'll think, oh, border collie. He'll see black and white and he'll think border collie. And in that amount of time, the dog has to have the presence to be able to convince those livestock he's in control. Because once they see him and they see they have those little short legs, if they don't feel as though the dog's in control, they'll read the dog and they'll just be gone. They'll just run away. Away, Ingrid! Ingrid's gentle ways seem to be working to the amazement of the spectators. Come. Ingrid, come by! Sure and steadfast, Ingrid is slowly getting them closer and closer to the pen. Ingrid completes the trial. She loses points for her puddle avoidance technique but still gets her advanced class rating. For Dana, Ingrid is truly in a class by herself. 33 dog is the cardigan with a score of 91 out of 100. Yay! Woo! Dana's respect for her polite, diminutive herder continues to grow. She's a great ambassador for the breed. She has a wonderful personality. She has a wonderful disposition. She has her own place in my heart. And she has her own place in uh, showing people how great cardigans can be. Jassel, a three-year-old New Zealand heading dog, works on John McPeak's farm. She's been with him just four months. Jassel helps John move his cattle from one paddock to another. Good girl, Jassel. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. New Zealand heading dogs were developed a hundred years ago by crossing border collies with greyhounds. Farmers needed short-haired dogs with a lot of stamina to manage their huge flocks on the steep hills and mountains. Way back, Jessel. The result was a dog with border collie smarts Way back. and the speed of a greyhound. Way back, Jessel. Good girl. Down. But Jassel is more than a herder to John. John has Usher syndrome, which makes him hard of hearing and is robbing him of his eyesight. Down, Jessel. Down. He hears with a hearing aid, but only has pinhole vision. 
He looks more capable than he is. It's only because of Jassel's help that John can still work on the farm. A lot of people don't think I've got a disability at all, but I certainly had. I've got very poor hearing and um, I only have 10% vision. Sometimes John even loses that and goes blind, especially in bright sunlight. When John ventures away from his familiar surroundings, he needs a guide dog. Jassel is the first of her breed to become a guide dog. She was trained from puppyhood specifically for John. She's the first dual purpose dog in New Zealand, guiding and herding. Herding and guiding aren't a natural combination. Julie Hodge of the Royal New Zealand Foundation for the Blind was Jassel's trainer. The big things that I suppose I was concerned about with Jassel was that her desire to chase would come out in, in, in opportune times or inappropriate times. Jassel's job is multifaceted. As a herder, she needs to listen to John's commands. But as a guide dog, she must assume a lead role. When she's working as a guide, uh, it really does come to her to take the bulk of the responsibility. So that's a sort of a role reversal job there as well. Good girl, Gekko. Even though they've only been together for four short months, tomorrow they've got an evaluation. Jassel's two jobs require completely different skill sets. She must master both to stay with John. Today, John and Jassel are going to Auckland, so Julie can evaluate whether Jassel is honing the skills required for the job. Most guide dogs in New Zealand are Labrador retrievers. Because John does farm work, Julie decided to experiment by training a herding breed. We were a little bit worried about the um, heading dog. Um, they tend to be a little bit more active, a little bit more hyper. So we sort of thought, well, all we can do is give it a go. Living in the country, the walk to the bus stop presents some natural challenges. We hadn't tried anything like this before, so it really was a bit of an experiment. But in doing so, the hope was that John would have the ability to continue on with his farm work for a bit longer and also to get a bit of a guide dog out of that as well. A bus ride for Jassel tells her she's heading into the less familiar territory of the big city. My job is to go out and check the team, really, and just to make sure that everything is going smoothly, that they are developing well. Auckland is a busy city. Jassel still isn't comfortable with the noise and bustle of the urban setting. Jassel, we know, has a bit of anxiety when she gets into the city there, and it's quite hard work and there are things that I am having to keep an eye on. Find the door, Dad. Find the door. Jassel lived with Julie during her three years of training. There's still a strong bond between them, but Julie keeps a professional distance. Hi, John. Oh, Come hello, on. Julie. How are you? Hello, little Jassel. Good girl. Good to see you. Well, settle down, settle down. When you've raised a pup uh, and trained a dog, you really always hold a special place for them in your heart. I don't think that it will ever go away. What we're going to actually do today, I know you've only just walked through Newmarket, but we're going to actually walk back through the town again. Uh, and I'm just going to have a look at things like your curb approaches with Jassel, make sure they're nice and straight. Um, Jassel is doing well with the farm work, but she isn't as strong at guiding. Julie wants to see how much progress Jassel has made and whether Jassel and John have developed any bad habits. So it's not a test. You can't pass, you can't fail. OK, let's get going. It's important that someone goes out there and just sees how things are coming along. Little things can start to happen, start to go wrong, and if we catch them earlier, um, then they're quicker to fix. Taking an escalator requires teamwork. John locates the rail and checks that it's going up. Jassel gets Good. them off safely okay. before her nails can get caught. Lovely. Straight on. Straight on. Fine right, Jassel. Fine right. Julie checks that Jassel stays at John's side at all times. 
Jassel's main weakness is her eagerness to please John. If he motions to cross when a car is coming and Jassel obeys him, they could both be killed. What I want you to do is, as you see a car coming, just tell her forward, yeah. and she shouldn't go. So don't go if she if she tries yeah. to go. You check her, okay? Yeah. She's so willing that when he says to go, she's very inclined to say, yeah, yeah, I'll go. So that's something we're going to have to work on. Jassel won't let him cross. Julie's happy to see that Jassel waits for an opening in the traffic before leading John across the busy intersection. When we're in town, Jassel really is the boss, guiding me around and getting me from A to B safely. OK, John, yeah. you just stop there. Yep. That was good. So Julie's pleased good that Jassel and John's teamwork is developing so well. So really, that's it for a couple of months, and we'll, and we'll be back to see you again unless there's something you need in between, in which case, give us a call. Yeah, and you okay. think she did very well, huh? Did fine, mm. yeah, did fine, John. Yeah. Good, gentle. Did you hear that? So you can go and have a drink now, John, and oh, that's nice <laughs> enjoy job. the rest of the day. Yeah. After a long, stressful day, oh. Jassel and John return to the calm and quiet of the farm. It's only been four months, but Jassel has given John a new sense of freedom. Well, I certainly love her, yeah. It certainly make a big difference in my life. That's with my little girl, seeing I don't have a family, so that's with my little baby. Hogan is training for a competition. This four-year-old lab is making a name for himself as a big air jumper, or dock dog. Dock dogs run down a long pier and leap for distance to retrieve a floating object. Hogan's personal best is 21 feet. The record is 26 and a half feet. If Hogan does well at tomorrow's competition, he'll be one step closer to the great outdoor games. Last year, he was just one dog away. Mark Stewart is Hogan's owner. Hogan loves to jump. He loves to work. I guess there's some money involved, but for us, we do it just because he loves it. That's why we jump. Still, if Hogan wins, he could bring home $4,000. Mark and his wife, Carla, adopted Hogan from a rescue organization as a buddy for Fryer, their golden retriever. But Hogan was insecure around other dogs, and he attacked Fryer. It was at least six months before the dogs became friends. Hogan used to be so nervous around other dogs, his fur would fall out. Mark built up his confidence through sports. Today's competition is being held at an indoor pool. Hogan's never done an indoor jump. He's not the only dog with pool issues. Forty-eight dogs are competing today. Judge Shad Field has been following Hogan's progress. Our world record is 26-6. So as a national champion, he's got a little ways to go. But as far as being able to make it into the top 12, I think he's got very good chances. The audience settles in, anxious for the competition to begin. The distance is measured from where the dog's hind quarters enter the water. Hogan uses a speed technique. He runs at top speed down the dock to retrieve an object from the water. During practice, he gets extra lift from jumping over a bar. Good boy. The best jumpers boy. use the chase technique. Where you run the dog down the dock and you lead the dog up in the air, to get maximum carry. It's called the chase technique. They chase the ball up in the air. He hasn't mastered that yet good enough for competition, so we've got to revert back to our old way of doing things today. This is Hogan's main rival, Dwight, another black lab who took bronze at last year's great outdoor games. But there's a new rising star, a border collie named Gabe. Gabe jumps an impressive 20 feet. Smoke that one. That's a 20 plus. It's Hogan's turn. Let's go, come on, let's go. Yeah, 
This is Mark Stewart and Logan. His speed is good, but he doesn't get enough lift from his front legs. His jump is only 17 feet. Even though Hogan's off his game, he still made it into the finals. I love watching Hogan jump in competition. It's just still emotional for me, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's time for the finals. The pressure is on. Even though the chase technique would give Hogan the lift he needs, Mark sticks to their tried and true speed technique. But will it get him far enough to win? That last jump just put Hogan in second place. He traditionally gets stronger as the day goes on, and he's just getting more confident, and uh, he just loves it. Hogan's chances look good, but Gabe, the young upstart, has yet to do his final jump. 21 feet, three inches. No one manages to top the border collie. Hogan finishes a proud third. He and Mark will have plenty more chances to qualify for the great outdoor games. 19-6 is certainly not his best effort. However, I was really proud of how he adjusted. You know, he got stronger every single jump. Uh, his confidence grew. I've never seen Hogan have more fun before in an event. I really look up to Hogan. He has truly overcome everything that, that has, has faced him. He's changed my life, and I've changed his, and we're best buds. Right? Yeah, best buds. Yeah. Yeah.